So now in this video we're going to use an op amp to make a voltage follower. And ultimately what that is is the voltage we set to the non-inverting input will be the voltage at the output. And op amps do a really good job of that. To do so you need a direct negative feedback uh, connection. So you plug the output directly to the inverting input. So this is a single supply op amp. We are using the uh, LM358. There's uh, two of them on the integrated circuit. We only need one of them. But you can connect the, it actually says ground pin, directly to ground, zero volts, when you have a five volt supply. So dual op amps, or uh, split op amps, whichever one you want to call it, uh, split power supply, they need a negative voltage uh, powering them in relationship to ground to work properly. So you don't absolutely have to, but uh, it's better if you do. So in any case, topics for other videos. We have the uh, trim pot right here. We can set the uh, voltage. So the op amp and comparators, they look at the voltage at the two pins. And that determines the output. So we did comparator circuits with an op amp in a recent video. When the non-inverting got higher, then the output was high. When the non-inverting got lower, then the output went low when it was comparing them. So now we have feedback coming back. So the voltage will change at the inverting input. And uh, so if we try to raise the voltage at the non-inverting input above the inverting input, that output raises and raises it up. So basically it just raises and lowers as needed to match the uh, non-inverting input right there that we set. Pretty straightforward. And uh, so we have a load here and this one's gonna be a little more interesting is we'll have a middle ground at points. And so we were going directly to ground because the single supply can do that. The blue LED lit up. And then we went directly to, it didn't make it to five volts. It actually makes it a little less than four volts. That's why it's a single supply instead of a rail to rail. But in any case, that was enough voltage to get only the red LED to light up. And uh, it's too close to uh, five volts. But in any case, we have a middle ground here where we'll have uh, both LEDs light up along that middle ground. So let's look at that on the breadboard. Here's the pin layout from the uh, kit that I got. So that's one, two, three, four. You can see the divots there. And then five, six, seven, eight. So pin eight and uh, pin four are the supply voltages. We got uh, the VCC up there and the ground right there. You can see that we have the uh, trim pot right here. That's going to the third pin down. That is the non-inverting input. The inverting input, we have a little jumper right down there. Uh, you might see this little silver thing. That's as close as I can zoom without it uh, getting blurry. But uh, there's a little uh, silver wire there. Basically, it's one of these leads, but there's no plastic uh, on it. These little jumpers usually have plastic. And uh, so that's going from the inverting input to the output right there. 220 ohm resistor to protect the red LED, anode there, cathode there, and one kilo ohm to protect the blue LED. So again, the uh, anode long lead more positive, cathode more negative when it's lit up. So again, blue LEDs need less current to get brighter, plus the uh, output goes uh, all the way to ground, but not all the way to five volts. So there's more voltage difference across those two components. So higher value resistor helps even the uh, brightnesses and uh, helps even out the current a little bit. But in any case, there you can see output is the uh, top pin, inverting input right below it, and then non-inverting input right below that. So now, of course, it's voltages that we're really interested in. Right now, the output is off. If you have this particular supply, you have to hit the power on, power button to get the output on for it to provide power to the uh, circuit. The display is lit even when it uh, says off. But in any case, there you can see we got five volts. I limit current to 20 milliamps to make sure we don't damage anything. So I've gone over that a lot. The other side of the oscilloscope there are these alligator clips, the other end of the cable. So we're going to make our uh, voltage measurements in relationship to ground. So we got the uh, black clip there with the blue jumper. And uh, first voltage we're going to look at, I guess, let's just look right at the uh, trim pot right there. And there you can see it's set to about one volt. Hopefully you can uh, see all that. I'll zoom back a little bit. But in case, you're going to see that if I go lower, the blue LED just stays lit. I get to the middle ground, we have them both lit. 
and now the uh, red one is lit right there and I can go up to 5 volts so I'm gonna jump this up one spot it's actually the non inverting input there you can see that we lost some voltage that's just because it doesn't output uh, 5 volts and uh, so I went to the output that little jumper is a direct connection doesn't matter if we go to the output or the inverting input we'll have the exact same voltage right there so that is the uh, feedback now I can turn the uh, dial lower the voltage like we saw before and it uh, falls a little shy of zero volts but uh, that's because of the LED so without a load if you just look at a voltage where you don't really need current it does go all the way down to zero volts right there but uh, main thing is the uh, voltage that we were looking at is at the inverting input and the output it's following what we set with the trim pot right there and uh, so wherever I set it as long as it's within the uh, output limits right there so now we're at about two volts I'll put it to the uh, trim pot right there exact same voltage that's the main thing we're transferring the voltage so what is the use of that is that this is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot and so we can easily change the voltage as long as it's within the supply voltage uh, really really easily problem is there's 10,000 ohms of resistance along that path so it's really nice for giving a signal 10,000 ohms of resistance not much current flows through it and the inputs for integrated circuits often don't need any current and uh, so that's what the op amp inputs are they don't need current they just look at the voltage a tiny current trickles through but uh, for the most part they don't need any current so we're not throwing off the voltage of the trim pot due to current going through and uh, but these LEDs they need a significant amount of current in relationship to 5 or 10 or 3000 ohms of resistance or whatever and so it uh, outputs it provides the power at the output from the power supply but ultimately it gets diverted through the integrated circuit to hold the voltage as best it can we saw it struggles a bit to get to zero volts with a load but if we get rid of the load uh, we don't have that problem we're at the uh, trim pot now uh, and we also saw that uh, it it really does fail to get to a uh, five volts even if you remove the LED right there so you got limitations but for the most part it follows the uh, voltage so that's really about all there is for a single supply op amp as a voltage follower so hope you enjoyed I'll pop up some other videos make sure you check them out click like subscribe the bell all that donate to patreon if you can I got links down in the description that helps out the most but just watching the videos helps out a ton so thanks for that I'll see you in the next video